All right guys, so today we're gonna to start looking at the derivative as a function. And so far what we've done is kind of look at the derivative at individual points. Like we might say, well, let's look at this function here and let's think about x equals negative one, right? So I'm gonna put negative one up here and I wanna know what the derivative at x equals negative one is. So to do that, the way we've been kind of thinking about it is like we look at the point and we say, well, if I just only look at this part of the graph, what's the slope here? Right? And now this is a linear function, so we can actually see that the slope here is 1. Right? The slope here is 1. And we can ask that same question at a bunch of other points too. We could look at negative 2 and say, well, what's the slope at negative 2? And it's actually going to be the same thing that it was here. The slope is still going to be 1. And I could ask that question anywhere else. And let's just say, just for now, let's actually ask it at 0, 1, and 2. And the slope at all those places is 1. Right, And so what I'm doing here is I'm kind of, we're, we're starting to look at the derivative as a function for the first time. We've always kind of looked at it as a rule that takes an input and it gives me an output. In this case, the output is the slope, right? And that's actually a function. So we can put that on the graph, right? On a graph for its own. And so if I plot these, these points that I have here, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, I'm going to see that, well, an input of negative 2 gives me an output of 1, right? My slope there is 1. An input of negative 1 gives me an output of 1. My slope is still 1 there. And at all these other inputs, my slope is still 1, right? And so we can see that the graph of my derivative is actually going to look like a straight line here. And why is that? Well, let's kind of think about what this is saying. What this is saying is any input you give me, my output is going to be 1. I'm going to tell you that my slope is 1 for any input. And that's definitely the case with this line, right? This isn't a very interesting problem, but that's, that's the idea that we're going for here. So let's think about a slightly more complicated example. Let's think about something like this is actually going to be x squared here. So let's do the same thing we did before. Let's take a bunch of different points and see what the slope is at each of those points to get an idea for what the graph of the derivative will look like, right? So at negative 2, my point's up here, and so the way I figure out the slope up there is I kind of draw a tangent line, remember? It's a line that bounces off my graph, it's supposed to be a straight line, but it doesn't, it, it doesn't cross it. It doesn't cross it, right? And so the slope of this tangent line is the value of my derivative at negative 2. Now the slope of this, it looks pretty negative, right? And I'm going to give you a hint that the slope there is negative 4. Okay, but really just any negative value will do for your purposes here. Point is it's decreasing. We can do the same thing here. Right, at negative 1, what's the slope here? So I have my tangent line, and my tangent line there, it's going to be another negative number, negative 2. And now if you didn't get that, that's fine, but the, the point is it's less negative than what we had up here. Now the real important one to get is here. What's the slope at x equals 0? Well, let's draw my tangent line and kind of see. Well, you know what? It looks like the slope of this tangent line is 0, so my output should be 0 there as well. And the opposite thing from the left side is going to start happening on the right side. So kind of look at these tangent lines here. Try to use a ruler instead. Try to get it to be straight. So my tangent lines here are positive now. Notice so that this tangent line is going to be positive, we'll say positive 2, and this tangent line is going to be even more positive, right? It's an even steeper slope. So we'll say that tangent line there is positive 4. So what's this going to look like on a graph? Right? So at negative 2, my out, for an input of negative 2, my output, my slope, is negative 4, right? The slope of that tangent line was negative 4. For an output, for an input of negative 1, my output was negative 2, still a negative slope, it was still decreasing, but a little bit less. The key is that my input of 0 gave me an output of 0, right? There's 0 slope there, and then the kind of the opposite thing was happening over here, right? So for an input of 1, I had a positive slope, for an input of 2, I had an even bigger positive slope. And so we can kind of connect the dots here and see that this is kind of like a line looking thing, right? Sorry for my inability to draw through these dots. It's actually really hard with this graphic tablet. 
But the key here of what we're doing is we're looking at particular points on our f of x, asking what the slope is, we put it in a table and then we can kind of see what's happening.